going away. And that's the calculus they try to need to key into. So, once in charge, how can mayors steer their cities in the right direction? A leading policy think tank has released reports dealing with growth and employment, as well as challenges facing the country's leading metros. Joining us now is the head of the Center for Development and Enterprise, Anne Bernstein. Thanks so much for your time, Anne. Let's first start off with the meaning of this municipal election. What does it mean for South Africans? What did it mean for politicians? Well, the country's in crisis. We have an economic crisis. We're heading for 0% growth. We have a massive unemployment crisis, probably the worst proportionately in the world. And in the midst of all of this, we've had what I think is a fantastic election. It's consolidated our democracy. We've shown that the IEC could be independent and could run the election. The ANC has accepted its loss in a number of, number of metros, and that's very important for democracy. And I think a lot of voters rejected calls to vote race. Mm. So we've moved beyond the race referenda sort of approach to South African politics and policy issues, delivery is go now going to matter a great deal. So I'm very encouraged. I think this is an enormous step forward for the country and hooray for democracy yeah. and for competitive party politics where you can throw the rascals out and try a new bunch. Yeah. So obviously uh, political parties made really big promises uh, ahead of the election. Now comes the big challenge to implement those promises, isn't it? Well, we think this is really important that the political change has come in our biggest cities because South Africa's future is urban and it's the cities where most of our economy takes place and where most of the jobs are created. So the future of the cities is absolutely vital for the country as a whole. And we're saying we've released a report on growth and the cities and jobs and we're saying that South African cities need to focus much more on jobs and growth and how they make the city economy much more competitive and much more labor intensive. So we have a lot of challenges and once the haggling over the coalitions has taken place, the new governments in our metropolitan areas have to really deal with expanding urban populations and with an economy that is moribund. And we think we need greater voice for the cities. The country's focused on the cities now, mm. that's terrific. Power, resources, and a lot more attention needs to focus on how we manage those cities and the priorities. So cities need to be at the heart of our national growth strategy. Let's, let's talk about your report specifically. You have a suggestion for Nelson Mandela Bay, for instance, which if Athol Trollope manages uh, to form a coalition government there, he could use. So tell us about the suggestion for this city specifically. Well, Nelson Mandela Bay has one of the highest unemployment rates of any city, proportionately. And so growth and jobs are a very important challenge. What we're proposing is that in this area where you have not one but two underutilized ports, the city should look at turning Kucha or using Kucha or some area as an export processing zone. Manufacturing's location is changing worldwide. So lots and lots of low-skill manufacturing jobs are moving out of China. And we're saying South Africa should try and get some of those. So we're proposing an export processing zone geared for low-skill manufacturing. Because the problem in South Africa is that so many people have terrible education through no fault of their own, and then they can't find a job. But if you could get a job in a factory, learning some skills and all the things one learns from a, a sort of formal job, we think this could not only help the country's exports, but also help in growth and unemployment in that city. So. We're encouraged that he mentioned the idea for an export processing zone over the weekend. And we're saying we think South Africa has a chance to get some of these global manufacturing jobs that are moving. And we can be globally competitive. We need to change some of the rules. You mm. need employers to be able to negotiate wages and conditions with their employees in the factory in order to make it globally competitive. But we think if you compare unemployment to a basic job. A basic job yeah. wins every time. And we also think that 
if you look at what we're paying for expanded public works, jobs, which is about 80 rand a day, not a lot of money, at that rate, we can be globally competitive. And a private sector job with a future, with some training, with some sort of prospects of full-time employment is a much better option for, for many South Africans than an expanded public works job picking up litter on the side of the road that goes mm. nowhere. Now, very quickly tell me then, of course, Nelson Mandela Bay has the advantage of having a port, but what about the areas inland like Tswane or Johannesburg? How can these uh, cities be better run? Well, a lot of things. First is to establish your priorities, which we're saying should be growth and jobs. Then to be very clear what national policies affect you detrimentally. And cities need a larger voice in national policy debates in the country. They're not given sufficient um, individual kind of voice in how the budget is allocated and a whole lot of other things. We need to look at how we make the cities much more accommodating to poorer people. How do we look at transport from the areas where there's very little opportunity to areas where there is opportunity and how we look at making the environment for firms much more encouraging. So South Africa is one of the worst countries for the number of days it takes to start a business. Kenya beats us you know, so most of our cities are between 46 and 56 days in order to register a business. Kenya is below 30. Right. Rwanda is below 10 days. So that's just one example. So there's lots to do, lots in our document, and we think there's a much more focused attention on getting rid of corruption, putting the right people in positions and getting the A team to start running our cities and not just, oh, I didn't get a position in the cabinet, yeah. I didn't get a job in so the fast, province. It's fast, a uh, fast you know, policy um, that needs to be implemented. Meritocratic but clearly focused on growth yeah. and labor intensive growth and shouting loud about what national policies are holding back our metropolitan areas. Well, hopefully they'll competing. actually shout loud enough for people to hear that this needs to be changed. Thanks so much for your time. We do appreciate it. That was Anne Bernstein, head of the Center for Development and Enterprise. Other stories now. Metro rail commuters in Cape Town can expect delays and cancellations on its southern line. A fire damaged several carriages at the retreat station depot yesterday. Fire and emergency services managed to extinguish the blaze. Police are investigating the cause of the fire. Still ahead on ENCA, mudslides in Mexico have left dozens dead. More after this. The Clientel Legal Business Plan is designed especially to support your small or medium-sized business. Whether you're in construction, transport, maintenance, specialized services, or retail, let us take care of your legal matters. We will handle all your labor, civil, and commercial matters. We will also assist with your debt collection. Affordable legal protection for your business. SMS COVER to 47028 and we'll call you back. Just you, just me. Let's find a cozy spot to cut and woo. Oh, gee, what are your charms for? What are my arms for? Use your imagination. Total Quartz. Keep your engine younger for longer. While others tried every little thing to get their cars quick to sing, Sterling Moss and Dennis Jenkinson took a step back and realized the secret to winning wasn't how fast your car could go, but how well you knew where you were going. They won the 1955 Mille Miglia in the fastest time ever. The best results come from seeing.